Welcome to the Legends and Master Show, everyone. I'm your host, Tom Wheeler, and I'm very excited to introduce our guest today. And he's an awesome actor, stunt performer, featured in many films and TV shows. Uh, he's a martial artist. We have a, a lot of great things to cover today. So welcome the man of action himself, Vic Plajas. Hello, sir. Hey, what's going on, brother? What's up? In post, I'll, up, I'll put in the, the audience applause first. That's <laughs> <laughs> all good. Uh, man, thank you for taking time uh, to be on the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, we've had Thanks some. Yo, you got it. We've had some people on the show. Lauren Mary Kim, uh, Stephen Keffer. We just talked about this a little bit. Uh, spoke people. highly of you. And I love your work. And that's the great thing when I get I get the research as well. People come on the show. It's like, oh, man, not only was he in this, but he trains with this. And so you see all these other cool little uh, uh, footnotes, so to speak, uh, cool. to things. So, man, like. It's kind of, I always try to get the elephant in the room out of the way up front. We have this crazy pandemic going on. It's affecting Ugh. everybody. I know people are making adjustments and things right now. Uh, what, how have you been adjusting? Um, I mean, you know, just pretty much like everyone else, you know, you try to train at home and not wreck the living room or destroy your furniture <laughs> <Yeah>. and <laughs> try, try to do as much as you can with whatever limited space that you have and stay in shape. I guess trying to stay motivated because you know, you can also get really complacent and, and kind of bummed out because you're you're like not around your training partners, you're not around yeah. the people that you normally see on your weekly or daily routine. And it you know, you always get to that point where you're like, Man, what day is it today? Yeah. Is it Wednesday? Is it Thursday? Like, you know, you start to lose track of time. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Time's relative and it's pretty hard. Um, yeah. Yeah, I imagine, I, yeah, especially trying to do, I don't know, like tricking or anything in your 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 place has got to be pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a tricker. Like, I, I just work on, like, my basic martial arts and, oh, cool. you know, trying to stay motivated. I think the, the, the biggest thing is, like, time management, right? Because you have, before, like, you usually have no time. It's like, I got to get up. Yes. I got to go to the gym. I got to go to set. I got to go to class. I got to go train. I got to go spark. And now you have all this free time, and you're like, Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I'm gonna go on YouTube and teach myself how to do something, and now yeah, I'm gonna right. Yeah. Something. You know, clean clean the apartment, walk the dog, <laughs> play play a video game, like you know, figure something out. Write that novel you always been wanting to do. No. Yeah. You know, <laughs> check all the stuff off the bucket list. I'm gonna teach myself how to speak a new language today, or whatever. Right. It is. Right. You know, I uh, I I my day jobs like seven days a week i train i have a i own my own brazilian jiu-jitsu academy we also teach sambo and judo uh, nice. wrestling, more, more the grappling side of things nice. um and yeah like that that went from like like 12 hour days seven days a week to nothing yeah <laughs> you know and you had to just online uh what what uh martial arts uh, or I guess a more appropriate question is what martial arts have you started with and then obviously we'll we'll work our way through to more present day uh yeah the 64 million dollar question uh yeah. i i mean like everybody i started with like karate when i was like eight or seven you know you start with like shotokan or like some local gym or whatever and like you don't really know what you're doing you just know that like bruce lee was awesome so you want to do what bruce lee does and you want to yeah. kick and do the flying side kicks and all that crazy stuff yeah speaking of which we throw some yeah as we go through yeah yeah so you know you want to do that when you're a kid and not hopefully not destroy your mother's living room. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I did karate for a little bit. Um, and then I really didn't pick martial arts back up till I was about, I want to say like in my mid twenties, okay. you know, did a couple of point sparring tournaments and stuff here and there when I was living out in Puerto Rico. Um, then when I was in my twenties, wow. I remember watching uh, Mark DeCoskis and Only the Strong. Oh, man. Yeah. Good pull. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So by then, I was already living in New York. And I was like, I have to train capoeira. Like, I, ha yeah. I have to find oh, a capoeira. I just tool. started, man. It is. I, I love it. I've been really focused more on uh, movement training anyways. Yeah. Especially doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It kind of goes hand in hand with it. Yeah. So you've been mm -hmm. doing cap capoeira for a, a while now? Yeah. So I did capoeira for about six years. Um, nice. did Hejonal, did Angola, like, you know, mess around with every style of capoeira I could find because it nice. was like, you know, I wanted to do capoeira. That was like my thing. It's like, I'm in New York, I have to find a capoeira school. Yeah. <laughs> um, did that for about six years and I would run into a, a mutual friend of my capoeira instructor at the time 
like every so often. His name is Dan Anderson. He runs uh, Anderson's Martial Arts in New York City. Oh, okay. And they're under uh, Guru Danny Nasanto. And every time I'd run into him, he'd be like, hey, when are you going to come to train with me? Yeah. And it's like, you know, dude, I can't. I, I can't afford it at the time. And I was working security. I didn't have the money. I was like, oh, I, I can't. Really? Okay. So every time he would see me, when are you going to come share with me? And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I'm, you know, you kind of feel bad if I keep turning the man down. Yeah. And I was like, I, yeah. So I wouldn't give him a reason, you know, specifically why. But finally, I was like, dude, like, honestly, I, I can't. I can't afford. I don't think I can afford it. So he was like, you know what? Come by the school. Uh take your free intro lesson, your private, whatever, one of my instructors, and we'll talk about it after, afterwards if, you're, oh, cool, if you like okay. what you get. Cool. Go take my private lesson, you know, take your basic Kali, your schema, some JKD, some trapping. I was like, oh, cool. Very I'm in love. Yeah. Thanks but there's the money. In it. Yeah. So, you know, we talk about price and this and that and the third, and he's like, well, you know, this is what you'll need to take is, you know, you're a beginner. You don't have to worry about the advanced classes. You don't have to worry about, you know, all this other stuff that's extra fee. This is this will be your base rate. And he goes, anything else will work with you because you know your 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 friend and your family. Oh, that's awesome, man. So start a training, and I've been there for eleven years. I think it's going to be in February. Man, that's yeah. a, that's awesome. Start to that though, amazing. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know. Uh, Started with like JKD because obviously, you know, yeah, yeah, you gotta represent Bruce Lee. Yeah, Come on. yeah, you know, I even stopped and, asking that to you know, martial artists. I just stopped asking the question, like, who's your you know, biggest influence? Because everybody, it's Bruce Lee. It's yeah, 90% of the times you're gonna get a Bruce Lee, like, occasionally, but, well, you know what? I have some of my friends that, yeah, will list as an influence, like Van Damme, okay. Because you know you remember Bloodsport, and it's first oh, time yeah. you see some dude doing a split between two chairs, and you're like, "Oh shit, I gotta try that." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you know, I have a friend of mine that listed like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that first 1990s film that he was like, "I wanted to be a Ninja Turtle, and that drove me to do martial arts." Wow, it's yeah, it's it's, it's uh, you never know what, what inspires you, and uh, yeah. we you kind of touched on the the subject a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to skim over. Uh, you live in Puerto Rico. Are you usually like? From there, or you had your family moved there at some point. I, I I was born and raised primarily in New York, and I okay. moved to Puerto Rico when I was about twelve. So wow. I'm, you know, Afro Caribbean. Yeah, you know, Black Puerto Rican. And well, the last name kind of gives away a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I lived there for about sixteen years because uh, I my mother had a daughter uh, before me, so okay. she wanted to be closer to her. My sister. So we moved over there in order to be a whole family, That's and then awesome. when I became okay. of age, I moved back to New York. What was it? What was it like living there for you? I mean, especially you know, mo you know, most of your life. I mean, when you're like, was you say twelve when you went back? You kind of yeah, a little more self aware, right? So what was that shift like for you? Uh, you know what? Honestly, it was weird in the sense of like, you grow up in New York, and like my grandmother and like my cousins were all here in, in the states. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, we're going to take you out of school and take you to like an island where you don't know anyone. And yeah. I could not speak Spanish very well. Wow. So okay. That'd be a big I, shift. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when I got there, I was like getting bullied at school and getting teased because, you know, you're wow. the, the American when you go over the, the gringo. Yeah. <laughs> and on top of that, you're the new kid. Oh, yeah. The double whammy on that one, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're like the new kid who barely speaks the language. You you know, they think that you think you're this, you know, you're it because you're from New York. And you're like, dude, I just got here. It's like, I'm just trying to make some friends. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. And uh, that's a big shift. Then, man. That's a big shift. Yeah. And then the shift was weird because when I would come back to New York, to New York on vacation, it was the opposite. Because I had a little bit of an accent and I spoke Spanish, people were like, "Oh, you're the Latino who's here, the you know, the little country boy from Puerto Rico." And I'm like, "No, dude, I was born here. Like, what do you I'm like? No." <laughs> wow, very interesting. You know, you know, if you will, your own story arc, your own origin story. I know you. Yeah. I know you're, you're part of a lot of superhero stuff. Which we'll get into that in a minute. Oh uh, uh, yeah, like but, can't tell. Yeah. 
that's awesome. I guess the other thing, you know, I see, uh, you know, especially researching things uh, or even looking on your social media, which mm. any I'll post uh, all your links at the end here or as we go yeah. throughout. But uh, everybody should, should check out his social media, his, his Instagram and his YouTube channel. Like you, you could see a lot of the, the action that he brings to that by itself. But uh, you do like, man, you're you're not just in a lot of different productions and things, but you you like you experience life. You're, it seems like you're always you're everywhere. You know, and you're really, it seems like you're really uh, getting into what you're into, man. Like, well, mm-hmm. it looked like some conventions and then over here, some training. And then uh, I really dig that. Is, is that something that you just are uh, really trying to make sure, even though you get a busy schedule, oh, it's not as busy now with everything, but you always yeah. try to make sure you get that in? Uh, like, one thing that I always like, me and my father, my father's like really big into comic books. He was always oh, big into cool. comic books. He was always big into literature, Greek mythology. Oh, cool. Martial That's arts. Interesting. Yeah. Like my first Christmas gift was a pair of like foam nunchucks. That, you raise them right, right there. <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, we would sit down and watch like Enter the Dragon and Chinese Connection back then on awesome. Laserdisc. So comic books was always a thing that was like my father and I always shared. Like anytime there was a comic book movie, yeah, like we would go see like 89 Batman together, the yeah. Ninja Turtles movie, the X-Men films. Cap the Dolph Lundgren Captain uh, not Captain America, Dolph Lundgren uh, Punisher movie. Punisher, oh yeah, that's un- so underrated we, by the way. That that was that yeah. was solid. You know, I mean, obviously, you didn't have the te- technology had now they do now, but yeah, it was solid. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so we that was always our thing. So it kind of carried over uh, in my upbringing and my love for like comic books and comic book lore. And like, I go to the conventions. I'm friends with a bunch of artists, like the piece that's behind me right now. Oh. It's from a good friend of mine uh, named Jason Palmer. So Jason he does Palmer. all the, yeah, he does all the artwork for like Lucasfilm. So oh, I, I actually went to That's Star amazing. Wars Celebration a couple years ago and he did this. What was that like? That looks uh, amazing. It was, it was crazy. And he does killer work. I, I'm a, was, I, I always take my, we always go to the Comic Con conventions. I don't even know why they yeah. call it Comic Con anymore. It's not just combo. I mean, it's, it's no. just pop culture explosion, you know? That, dude, I remember walking into Comic Con. When it was thirty-five dollars to get in, there was okay. no one there. No, like you literally could walk and buy a ticket and just literally like ride a bicycle through the entire convention center and like not smacking anyone. Yeah. Now it's chaos. Oh, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's amazing. So yeah, I, I, going there and and I mean, that's the other thing. Like um, in your line of work or even going to conventions and just mm-hmm. rubbing elbows, you know, making friends. Uh, you yeah, you start getting these different like meeting artists and networking and things like that. I mean, that yeah. that's an amazing uh, aspect to what you do. Um, but you, yeah. So you guys always go to conventions and uh, different things yeah. like that. And and he'd always be very big on like, you know, support your local artists. If you see somebody nice. that has yeah. a comic book and even if it's not like a big name, like Marvel or DC, you know, you know, the dude put his heart and soul into it. For sure. You know what? Take your $5 and you know what? Here you go, dude. And just see what they got because you never know that that person might be the next big thing or it, even if he's not, it might be something that's just worth your time. So anytime I go to a convention, I always go to the artist alley first and I go see the yeah. artists. I go to the, you know, the local artists, the big artists, small artists, and oh. I try to buy something off of like anybody's table that I find interesting and which I'm clearly running out of space, but yeah. <laughs> you know, you do what you can. That's the one problem with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I had, at one point I had more, uh, uh, art up on the walls and family pictures. I'm like, ah, oh, man, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get, get crap for this. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I got my, I, my little books yeah. and stuff now. Yeah. If I have a yard sale, I'll be outside for like two years. Stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's but yeah, ridiculous. It's the, yeah, that's the other great thing. Yeah. You go to the, these, you know, different conventions and it's just art artistry and, and, uh, and, and finding treasures like I didn't know mm-hmm. this person even existed and, and, and things like that. We even had uh, like a week ago someone I ran into in the Chi- we're in Illinois. So um, like Chicago Comic Con uh, ran into these guys and, and I bought like half the booth. You just run into an artist you never heard of. And it's amazing. So, yeah, I, I, you know, another thing you do kind of segue uh, back into a little bit with the, the martial arts still art. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. back then, I mean, you it seems like you, know, you get to kind of train here and there with little everybody uh the amazing one and only boss <laughs> <Rutan> himself. <laughs> oh i love that man uh anderson silva yeah just name dropping a little bit and then the legend himself dan and sano yeah. i mean dude yeah. and you trained with uh I, I believe it at least dan and sano a couple of times right or, or uh, yeah like like he comes to the east coast and he does like his seminars every year and you just so go, i right? try 
see as much as I can to go and see the man because he is getting up there in age. Yeah. And still spry, man. I mean, dude. He's it's it's infuriating and it's inspiring because <laughs> it's a history lesson and a martial arts class at the same time. So he'll okay. give you a combination and then he'll start telling you like where the combination originated and how it was transformed through time and how the Filipinos do it and how the Thais do it and how the Burmese do it and how they do it in Indonesia. And by the time he's done talking, he goes, okay, let's do the combination number one. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> well, well, that's a lot of knowledge, again? man. <laughs> it's a lot of, but it is anyone that has the chance to train with a man, please do so because I, I'm always big on like, it's not only, it's not enough to know how to do a technique. You also have to know what's behind the technique. Why are you doing that technique that way? That's a great Why point. is it called what it's called? What's the history behind it? Um, you know, when I used to teach Muay Thai, I used to tell the students, it's like, what would you do right now if someone were to ask you, hey, I don't know anything about martial arts. Uh, what's this Muay Thai thing you're doing? Like, why is it called Muay Thai? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you're saying, yeah. Yeah. So you, you want to be like, because, uh... yeah, because at the end of the day, you are the representative. You're the living embodiment of the art. Right, the the art by itself, yes, is just great art. point. But you are the living embodiment; you're the living expression of the martial art. So it is your responsibility as a martial artist to know the history of what you're doing, not to just do it for the sake of doing it to look badass or to fight or to kick somebody's ass. Right, because great it, point. It, it it's just martial. There's no art to it. So you have to know your history. You have for to sure. know your history because because at the end of the day. Your responsibility also as a martial artist is to pass the art forward. It's how it lives on, right? It lives on through you, and then you pass it forward onto someone else. Exactly. You want to pass it on properly. That makes that that's a that's wisdom right there. Uh, you know, that's another thing I love about doing this show and interviewing super interesting people like yourself is you you do pick up uh, like not just motivation but the inspirational sides of things. I mean that that you just said there is not. I mean, you can apply to anything, you know, learning a, the guitar or, you know, I mean, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. It's, it's just, dude, know your craft. Like if you're spending X amount of hours a week beating up your body, kicking a bag or rolling yeah. or whatever, lifting weights, fencing, swinging a stick. And someone comes up to you and they go, Hey, why is that technique called whatever name? And you're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's like, no. okay. So you mean to tell me you spend all this time doing this and you have no idea what it's called. So like, does that make any sense? It, it, you, you get like a, a, the full intimate knowledge and, and under, full understanding. And if you got that full understanding, your application is that much yeah. greater. Yeah, I, I totally yeah. back that up. And you actually and, got and, to oh, – I'm sorry, go ahead. No, and it just – it gives you like a deeper appreciation for what you're doing. For sure. Because you know the history behind it. You're like, oh, my God, you know, like so many people have died or so many people have done X, Y, Z with it. Or this came okay. from this generation up to like now and to where you are now. So you have a deep appreciation of like what you have. That's amazing. Yeah, it's that's truth, right? It's exactly exactly it. Uh, and you actually, in more ways than one, got to apply that live yourself. Uh, I, yeah. I saw that you had this post here. You had a, a, a fight. Uh, man, like, was that the only one? I, I don't even know. No, I, I competed a couple of times in uh, – uh, Thai boxing and glory rules and Muay Thai. Um, nice. Uh, did a WK tournament years ago in Richmond, Virginia. And then after that, I just started coaching guys and, you know, teaching and coaching professional fighters. And I coached uh, nice. one of the fighters, although, you know, when he went to glory to compete in Vegas at the Hard Rock. And, you know, I assisted my instructor helping the guys as well when they were going to fight and training them and helping them out. And, you know, again, just paying it forward right because someone gave me the chance pay it forward that's a, a great attitude instead of like uh because <clears throat> yeah you do see different you know, everybody's got their own path right their own journey yeah. and you do see some guys like hey I, I pay you this much money a month or whatever and it's like a more like a customer vibe but mm -hmm. most martial arts throughout history even to current day and for the future are more uh like you just said like honor respect pay it forward and all that and and yeah getting that that full understanding into it and that i imagine had to greatly set you up for what inevitably came your career path which is acting and stunts and things like that is that was that the thing that kind of led you to it or 
Uh, I mean, kind of in, indirectly in a way, because you do learn a lot about yourself, ironically, when you're in a ring with another human being trying to take your head off. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of start to figure out like, okay, this is the point in time where I have to bite down on this mouthpiece and say, Jesus, take the wheel and let's go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once the fight is over and you come out of the other side unscathed, you're like, oh, I survived. Oh, okay, I'm alive. Like I'm good. Like I can, you know, I, I I can manage this because at the end of the day, again, my opinion. Yeah. Combat is just functioning under pressure. That's all nice. it is, right? Someone is yeah. putting you in a situation where most people are uncomfortable because it is violent. It is someone trying to bring violence your way in the form of competition. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get hurt. You're going to have to hurt them at a certain point in time. Right. Yeah. But you have to keep mental clarity of what you're doing because you don't want to brutalize a person. You just want to outsmart them. Right. Great way to word it. Yes. Awesome. So it, it is functioning under pressure and just understanding that you'll make it to the other side. Awesome. So that yeah. has kind of helped me out throughout everything else in life. It's like, you know, anytime you encounter an obstacle in life, it's just learning how to function under pressure that's amazing yeah that's uh you know just that alone that that would carry a lot of people through in, in many things i mean yeah even you know whether it's setting up for a fight or or getting ready for a big scene or something like that it has to be yeah. it's got to be it's, it's the same it's universal yeah i mean it's, it's like anything it's like you know you go on a job interview you know you're under pressure right your palms are sweaty you're yeah Someone sitting in front of you, oh, well, tell us why you'd be a good asset to our company. And you're like, uh, you know, your brain is like, I want it because I need money. But you're like, okay, I can't say that. So what do I? So you're under this pressure to try to say the right thing to get the job. Right. So you're right. functioning under pressure. The same thing. Unless you go stepbrothers with it and uh, you tag yeah. team the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tag team the interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's. Uh, I thought that was amazing. You know, obviously, you know, knowing of you from people that have recommend, you know, brought your name up quite a bit, and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I, 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 I know, I know his work, and and I'm going to start uh, delving into some of that now. Um, and uh, I'll put up one picture here. We'll, we could take up each one individually or whatever. But uh, this Netflix uh, TV shows of Daredevil, oh Luke Cage, Punisher, Iron Fist, Defenders. Yeah. I yeah. mean, dude, like this is, you know, we can we don't have to address all as a whole or each one, but like, right. I just want to say like, like, I think the daredevil is the first one that kind of really came out and, mm -hmm. uh, and all of them had followed suit of you. You feel like you're watching a movie I, yeah. the quality yeah. they put into it. And especially the fight scenes, yeah, the fight scenes. And you're a big contributor to this. Uh I mean, listen, I did my part. I wouldn't say big because there are a lot of guys right. that did amazing work on those shows. Uh, I have a lot of my coworkers that, yeah, a lot of those guys put in way more than I would ever put into those shows. And they did amazing work. And there's a lot of unsung heroes. But, um, you know, again, because I'm a fan of comic books, it it's... It was great to work on those shows because you're like, oh my god! Like I remember reading Daredevil, like Frank Miller's version of Daredevil. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. Luke Cage and the, the Immortal Iron Fist, and so to see that happening now and and you know my generation and and have it live on forever, I'm like, it's pretty oh, wild, this is, man. This is actually kind of wild. Like I well, never and thought being this would part happen. of it, being part of it too, and to be a part of it on top of that. I mean, uh, I mean, how old are you? Uh, old enough. Old enough. Well, I'm, <laughs> we're about, we're probably about, I'm about, I'm 39. So we're about, probably about, uh, yeah, about the same thing. age. So it's like, uh, you know, as, as you come up with it, yeah, like growing up, you know, I was a comic book guy. Um, that's always something that was just like, a, you keep it on the download, personal use kind of thing. Uh, it's not a big like thing that brought up at the school lunch tables and oh, stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. now though, it's completely different. It's just like everybody, is reading comics, watching comic book movies, wearing comic book stuff. It is it is interesting seeing that change and kind of going in line with what you said there. Yeah, it, it, these shows, it, like who who would ever guess we would have gotten a, any of these, let alone no. one of them. And it's funny because now it's the complete opposite. Now, if you don't know who Tony Stark is, 
Yeah, you're like you're not cool. Yeah, you're like, oh, what's wrong with you? Like, you've never seen an Avengers film? Like, oh, if you, if you don't know who Thor is, there people look at you like, like, who are you? What planet are you from? Yeah, you know. And I remember years ago when it was like, oh, that's for kids. Adults don't watch those type of films. Like, why are you watching that? And now it's a complete opposite. Like, if you, know, you don't know who Star Lord is, like, yeah. Well, that's the who? interesting thing. Like, especially, especially. Uh, I mean, there's so many names to name, but I'll just name the the biggest one, Stan Lee. I mean, this yeah. guy, he was throwing a, a look at any of the X-Men, whether it's comics, cartoons, movies, you know, anything, mm -hmm. any of that. It had a lot of uh, drama. It wasn't just guys in tights, you know. Uh, he was bringing, bring, he was trying, I think his original goal was, was to write the great American novel or whatever. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I, think, I think the smartest thing that Marvel did as a whole was that they were able to make their heroes relatable. Like the, the biggest problem yeah. that DC Comics had back then, say for Batman, was that everybody was like this unattainable figure. Like you would look at Superman, okay. he was great, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Alien from another planet, yeah. super powered being, you can't kill him. Yeah. So yeah. so as the average Joe, you're like, I wish I could fly, but I'm like, oh, well, you know, what's his biggest problem? Oh, a piece of rock that glows from his planet. Eh. But then right, you run right. into the X Men and they have like the social commentary of the fact that humanity against mutants of how they're viewed as outcasts, how they're on yes. the run, how there's that dichotomy of they're trying to do right by mankind to follow Xavier's teachings. But then you have Magneto on the other side telling them like, no, we should be the dominant species. Right, right. Yeah, it's so really telling it in choice. an artistic way, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 great seeing the, that come to life. And it's, yeah, it's in the same you know, conversations as other movies. I know there's a whole, um, you know, like Martin Scorsese's had some takes on it and there's, you know, there's mm -hmm. back and forth on it. Like it's the modern day Western or whatever, but yeah, yeah it, it is uh, a lot of good rich story. I think that was the other thing. It was an untapped resource of storytelling. Oh, um, and I, there's another, um, uh, this is not superhero based, but uh, when you were in Ray Donovan, this looked like a rough day at work to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> or fun day. That was a fun day at work. <laughs> so uh fun day man like uh how, how much i'll put it back how much goes into you know, like for you uh whether it's pre previs the finish like how, how long does it take you to finish a nice scene like that? i mean previs for that when i fought eddie uh was about two days of prep you know going through the choreography and going through the entire scenario of the fight and making sure he's comfortable and making sure we're syncopating and we're comfortable with each other and just getting everything down so yeah. on the day there's no like oh i didn't know that was coming okay you know it's like a dance rehearsal you rehearse it and you rehearse it and rehearse it and you know exactly where to spin your partner where to pivot where to dip them where to duck where the, you know you know everything so that way there's no surprises in front of the camera because time is money and you don't want to waste somebody else's money or someone's time right right that perfect and you know honestly I, that is uh like kudos to you like that's testament to your work ethic professionalism and skills um I mean, you people want to rework with you uh, repeatedly. They, you're in all these amazing uh, productions for a reason. So uh, I'm thankful. Uh, oh yeah, I well, that the opportunities and everything, and 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 you seize the opportunities very well. Uh, I mean, the productions and everything you've done are awesome. Mm. Um, what is that like? You know, I mean, it's kind of like um, you know, especially coming up as we kind of talked about briefly about obviously your martial arts background mm -hmm. um, and coming up with just loving you know pop culture and things like that i mean you're yeah. in movies and working with i believe there's i'm not sure this is the exact picture but you you got to work with like rick baker um oh no 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 i work i work with uh or someone that worked with them or something like someone that, or? who studied in a rick baker that gotcha. was in the VFX, okay. and we were having a whole conversation while they were doing that to me yeah it's got to be pretty yeah. surreal. I, and I saw how the twos went in. I mean, it's pretty awesome, man. Uh, yeah, that that was for power. Uh, I can't remember what season exactly. And I had to fight 50 Cent of Kurt Nobody Jackson. Go, yeah. 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 I mean, honestly, out of I don't want to say out of everyone that I work with, but, you know, you figure 50, he's got the money, he's got the entourage, so he's a rapper. Like, he's going to come in and kind of be a little bit of a loose cannon. Complete opposite. Came in by himself, drove himself, showed up to the rehearsal, did the entire fight himself. Very shy person. Very shy. Interesting. Tells you to call what? him Curtis. You don't call him 50. You call him Curtis. Oh, like more like that's um, 
would that, maybe that helps his persona too, even just you know, I, I, I guess just, you know, and it took him a little while to open up, but once he did, he was like the nicest person on the planet, nicest person on the planet, strong as hell, though. Yeah, he, he looks, yeah, he, he, is he can hold his own, strong as hell. <laughs> um, That's got gorilla power. <laughs> Uh, man, I, I, I'm not gonna go into every little thing you've done. I just, uh, just cherry pick some things. And if you have any interesting, uh, maybe behind the scenes stories or, or, or interesting things that happen, just feel free if it raises something up in your head. Sure. Uh, this was, uh, uh, amazing. Not only is it such a big franchise, the biggest franchise, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. but just an amazing movie by itself in Black Panther. Black Panther. And, uh, I actually, you know, I researched, researched, I couldn't find the exact, Things you were doing there, I, I had the idea there was some wire work involved. Yeah, there was wire work. Uh, yeah. Uh, what 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 did you exactly do in uh, Black Panther? Oh, uh, we were part of Wakabi's tribe that oh, were okay. basically trying to kill T'Challa. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, so we were part of that tribe. There was a scene in the film where T'Challa jumps over a energy wall and he lands, and everybody goes flying once yeah. he explodes. So I was one of the bodies that was yanked out of frame, getting pulled once he lands. Um, That's wild, man. Yeah, that was, man, I think it was like 90 degrees. We were out wow. in Atlanta, I believe. You know, you're wearing wardrobe, a fleece cloak, you're, <laughs> you know, you're harnessed, all your stuff on. You're sweating out of every corner of your body, and, you know, you just have to be on point. Yeah, well, exactly. And what is that like for you? Like, oh, I always, I always like uh, ask people that because you know, especially if someone's used to just normal, being athletic body movement, uh, wire work's a different, different story. Yes. Uh, yes. What, what is that like for you doing doing wire work? There's some good footage of him, by the way, guys, on the social media. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of the opposite in certain senses of martial arts. Like martial arts, a lot of people tend to tense up a lot whenever they they do something or like they you want to relax. Like the, the more you ten that. yeah, the more you tense up, the worse it is for you. You know, it's like you, you try to bend a matchstick, it'll break. So you want to be see. like you want to be like bamboo. You want to give way so the wire, you know, takes you can ride it easier as opposed to just stand there like a dead stick in the mud and like have the thing just yank you off your out of your sneakers. Yeah. Interesting. So it it's it's like anything in life, man. You have to train. And train gotcha. and train and train and just train and not only train, but while you're training, mess up, mess yeah, up. Right. Like, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, I'm big on like, dude, while you're training, make all the mistakes you want, make all the mistakes. So that way, yeah. on the day, whether you're fighting or you're on camera or you're giving a speech, whatever it is, if you happen to mess up that day, it's already happened to you before. And you don't have the deer caught in the headlights moment of like, oh, I just messed up in front of people. What am I going to do right now? Right, right, yeah. Like you want to get that out of the way. That makes so, so that much way, sense, though. Yeah, yeah. You want to get that out of the way in, in, in training, but you have to train. You have to take the time to train to to, to fall to to get dust yourself off and get back up. And and there's nothing wrong with making mistakes in training because that's what training is for. That's what's for. Yeah. Yeah, you don't train to look perfect. You train to eventually get to that level of perfection. But training awesome. is where you mess up. Yeah, because I mean, uh, yeah, being on set and maybe maybe it's a scenario where it's like, man, we, we got one or two takes with this at best. You know, pyrotechnics or whatever explosions. And you're gonna want to yeah. be like, we're good. We're <laughs> I got all the kinks worked out here. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and 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 honestly, listen, I've been in situations where, you know, you get to set. It's daytime. You look at the call sheet, you're like the last shot up. And you're like, all right, well, it's going to be a while. So, you know, you hang around, see if the coordinator needs anything, carry pads, help out with anything you can. You go to lunch, six hours have gone by, you still haven't done anything. And then whatever, like one o'clock in the morning hits. And they're like, okay, you're up. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, and by <laughs> then you've already had a meal. It's past yeah. midnight, so your body's starting to tank and you'll have like one eye open, you're half asleep. And you so have to perform. You gotta be ready to go. So yeah, it's not like you a, a planned to. set. Like you know, I used to play uh, music live, and it'd be like you know, you ballpark. You're gonna go around this time, like you know, every yeah. half hour, right? And this is totally different. <laughs> you gotta no. be ready to go. And, and, and you have to be ready to go. And, and and it's not only ready to go, but 
you have to make that last take that you do look as crisp as the first one that you did. Yeah. Okay. So if you're doing 10 takes, number 10 has to look just as crisp as number one. So you have to learn energy management, right? You don't want to nice. go bananas okay. on the first one and tank out. And then by the last one, you're like, I got nothing left to throw. It's like, well, you should have thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Energy. I like the way you word that energy management. That that is what it is. Right? What and that's a martial artist mentality as well. I, you don't just go out there and just throw everything you have at the guy. You you, you like you outsmart him, like you're saying. Like you, yeah. you, you set things up. How how much uh you know what do you martial art wise? What do you studily like to train and versus you know obviously I imagine you train a little everything, but uh well, Muay Thai was like my biggest thing. Like I fell in love with kickboxing. Um you know, Andy Hug, yeah, yeah. Ernesto Hoost, you know, Raymond Deckers, you know, you see those guys and I was like, I want to be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be, you know, and then you get leg kicked the first time and you're like, okay, can yeah. I get my money back? <laughs> um, a little reality check. Yeah, you get the reality check hard, especially when you come home with like bruised shins and you're like, I did not know this was going to happen. And you see like some of these guys, not just bamboo trees, I saw, they're kicking like metal poles in half. I'm like, oh, oh. Dude, yeah, I've seen people. are still developed. And... I've seen people hit things that I'm just like, why? <laughs> why? Like, like, like I'm, I'm hurting looking at you. Yeah. Like, why? <laughs> but, you know, once that happened, uh, I met this uh, man, uh, Nicolas Sanyak, who was a Savat professor, my Savat professor. Yeah, okay. My instructor brought him over to teach a seminar. And, you know, I've always been interested in Savat. Yeah. Because, yeah. again, it, it's, you know, kickboxing, but a little different stylistically. And we just gelled. And every time he came to, to give his seminars, I would drop everything I was doing and go see Nicolas and train with him. And, awesome. You know, like the second year that he came, I, I like begged them to rank me. I was like, please, yeah. I don't care what I have to do. Like, I will stay here all day. <laughs> so, you know, they took us into the back room and gave us the curriculum for whatever glove you were testing because it, it is by color glove. Okay. And okay. he would call whatever technique was out in French and you would have to demonstrate attack and defense. Wow. Interesting. Oh, cool. So that was one thing that I studied that I was like, wow, this is, and also he's such a good person Amazing. that it just makes it even more worthwhile when you have someone teaching you and they're just a good hearted person. They're just yeah. a good natured oh, person. It makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and definitely, uh, yeah. And plus with the JKD, I've uh, done, you know, significant amount of Kali and Eskrima on the Innocento Lacoste. Oh yeah. Um, just started messing with jujitsu recently because you know it's time to take up that side of it as well. Yeah, <laughs> you need to add, just always have you know. I see that you uh train at uh Ashi, what, Ashi How do you pronounce uh what we're talking about? Your hat, oh, the Arashikage. There you go, that's how you get it. <laughs> yeah, you got a little everything, a little ninjutsu. <laughs> you know what. Honestly, it, it was one of those things where you know you, you figure like, oh, well, every fight starts standing up. Yeah. True, but the moment you wind up on your back and you're like, Yeah, okay, I don't want to be here, and on top of I don't want to be here, I don't yeah. know how the hell to get out, right? Right, that was yeah. the feeling that I told that I told myself, like, I never want to feel that ever again. Because one of my friends that did do jujitsu was like, Oh, let me show you something, and they put me on my ass, and I was like, They said so innocently, <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, and then you know, after a while, I was like, Okay, get off me, like, like you know. <laughs> And it's you develop a respect for the art because you're like, man, I am getting destroyed. And he wasn't hurting me. He wasn't doing anything that, like, he was mauling me. It was just that I was scrambling to try to get out of, you know, whatever his garden. I see, yeah. And he was just calmly moving around and repositioning. And, you know, and I'm like, what in the hell is going? Like, how many limbs does this person have? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's what I love about like what what you do. You know, uh, you, you you train multiple styles because to me it's a, uh, I mean, you want to have like I guess like your core, you know, basics, you know, and that that can permeate to anything. But uh, you know, variety is the spice of life, and the mm -hmm. more trained you are in any job, the more knowledge and the more value you have, right? And yeah. uh, I I I love that uh, about you as well because 
um, you know, like I tell my guys with jujitsu and, and grappling, it's like, you know, cause you know, it's so easy for different martial arts, whatever they are to, mm-hmm. or what, you know, to be like, this is, this is the one and only thing. It's like, well, I mean, there's, mm-hmm. what if we, you know, if we're going to get into weapon stuff that, that that's different, you know, <laughs> or even striking, yeah. if we're doing, uh, let's say just grappling and start striking. You're going to, you're going to react differently. So what are you trained for? So that, that's, uh, amazing about you too, that seeing that, I mean, that's a true martial arts. I think um, you actually follow a friend of mine, uh, uh, Lavelle Marshall. He's a Shui Zhao. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shui Zhao. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah, that super. guy's living the life right now. I think he's in Mongolia somewhere right now. Yeah, he's in Mongolia. He's actually, I'm talking with him. Uh, he's going to bring some Mongolian wrestling back to the States. Nice. Uh, and he's setting some, like, uh, something really cool things up with that, which if nobody's seen that, that's, that's uh, watching and listening to this, uh, Mongolian wrestling, man, it is it's, it's like Genghis Khan time stuff. It's pretty uh, badass. Dude, he showed me a couple of moves one day, and on top of the fact that he's strong as an ox, uh, yeah, that dude is ridiculously strong. You start to see little things and little tweaks in the game that you're like, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't think about that. And little foot trips and sweeps and little manipulations yeah. that he does, and you're like, you know, and it's so subtle. And next thing you know, you're on the ground, and you're like, what? the hell yeah. just happened how did i get here so yeah so you, you develop you know again respect because it, it's something that you would never think about until yeah. somebody opens that door and you're like oh all these possibilities are here now okay cool i gotta learn this <laughs> i'm not sure if uh we have any access to uh, uh the horses that they trip the uh... oh dude <laughs> I've, you see I've, them lately these tripping horses man that, that's how they dude. like uh train so He's doing stuff that I'm like, like, what next? Are you going to start catching arrows with your teeth? Like, yeah. like, like what's the next step? <laughs> Don't get my ideas. Uh, <laughs> so I see uh, another thing. We we had uh, uh, Stephen Kepfer on the show. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys had worked together on uh, uh, Ray Donovan and yep. uh, separately, but on the same project with John Wick 3. Uh, uh, John we also, also had the Collier brothers on on there. They're, uh, they're you know, famously in that the Sambo scene. The guys throwing mm-hmm. each other. And man, I I absolutely love this franchise. I believe I, I love all the Marvel kind of stuff with the wire work, but this is like grounded, like real techniques being applied. Yeah. Uh, although I mean, they're getting crazy. They're going uh, gung fu and then horse jitsu, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're getting very yeah. creative. I love it. I love it all, man. Uh, what was it like working on this? I mean, it was again because I'm a fan, not only of the franchise but or just film in general yeah it, just being there you know and what what i did was like very minor with some, we're just getting shot up in that the end scene in the content that was anything crazy but yeah oh, okay you know keanu right. shows up you know you hear all these stories that oh he's a really nice guy he's really down to earth and you're like all right cool you know we're there doing our thing trying not to bother him and he comes in and he beelines towards the stunt guys wow like, okay Sits down with the stunt guy, starts taking off his sneakers, and he goes, "Hi, Keanu, nice to meet you." And you're like, "Okay, yeah. I, I kind, I kind of know, but thanks." This is normal, yeah. Yeah, and he is just the most chilled out, nice, down to earth dude. And then they start shooting, and you start seeing him like go through a fight scene and just wreck shop. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy, dude. It's- you know, mind you, he's in his fifties. Yeah, yeah. He's not a spring chicken. So you see Keanu go take after take after take, and you're just sitting there like, what in the hell is it? Like, if somebody would have told me two years ago, on this day I was going to watch this, I, <laughs> I, I he said, kill me now. Kill yeah. me now. <laughs> so he just keeps cranking. He's like a workhorse, right? He just, I mean, he just. Yeah. Yeah. That dude, that dude is an animal. He, he's, 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 and it's, it's inspiring to see that, right? Because you, again, back to like, taking pride in your craft you're seeing someone who takes pride in his yeah. craft Great like he could yeah. easily be like no i'm sitting this out you know peasants you guys do whatever you got to do but he's in there you know he's getting his hands dirty he's covered in sweat from head to toe he's shooting right-handed left-handed rifle oh, yeah. two guns like he's doing the whole line you're watching john wick being john wick yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's and, insane yeah so you you just develop a greater appreciation for people that have that kind of a work ethic, for people who take pride in their craft, yeah. that they know that they're providing an experience to their fans, 
like the same way how like interesting you, yeah you want to see tom cruise do all this crazy stuff in mission impossible because right. you, you know you want to see keanu reeves flipping people and shooting everybody and their mother in a club and you know <laughs> save the day and come out with a puppy in his hand yeah right. yeah yeah so it's cool it, it was an honor and it was it was beautiful to see him work and just kind of be a fly on the wall and you know the 87 11 guys those guys are all oh, unbelievable yeah, unbelievable. yeah they're, they're on a different level they're not human yeah but that's the other thing like uh you, i imagine you can't help but just learn from the experience on set you know you know versus uh just doing you know some schooling on it or whatever being on set you working with the, all these amazing talented and very skilled people like that, mm -hmm. just seeing right what you say right there. That's a major takeaway. Like just seeing how, what he's doing for the craft and, and how he brings it to the fans. Uh, that knowledge you're picking up on it. That's got to be yeah. amazing by itself. I mean, listen, the, the beauty about working on something big like that, even if what you do is, is super minute, right? Or even if what you do completely gets scrapped or it doesn't. Yeah. The fact that you have the privilege to be there and see how they operate, see where where they position the cameras, where the shots are, where the angles are, you're able to see the work ethic, how many takes they do versus what you're seeing on screen. Because a lot of people, oh, I see. yeah, yeah, like when you watch like a Jackie Chan film and you see Jackie Chan take out 10 guys in a warehouse and he's throwing chairs and he's ducking under stuff and he's flipping, he's hitting people with everything he has in his hand. And then you see the behind the scenes or you watch a documentary and Jackie's That's saying, like, yeah, it's like 20 takes, it's like 20 yeah. takes for five minutes of film. It's it's insane. Just getting that, that down perfect. Yeah. So it, you, when you're there and you get to see all these things that you're like, wow, like this is work. It's not just show up and oh la la la. I'm on set. Like it's right. work. <laughs> it's repetition. It's trying to get it down till it looks perfect because you are selling an illusion, right? At the yeah. At the end of the day. At the end of the day, you're selling an illusion, but it's getting that illusion to look virtually flawless. Yeah, and that's then unbelievable. the other part is, you know, once the film came out, I obviously I went to the theater to go watch it. And you sit there and you were watching people like ooh and ah, and certain things. You were like, oh, I was on set for that. Okay, cool. And yeah. you see people's reactions and you're like, oh, oh okay, kind of cool. And you see people like screaming like, oh my God, no, shoot him, kill him. Like having their... Yeah their visceral reaction to what's happening to John Wick or to whoever's on screen. Yeah. So it, it's cool to have both of those sides to be like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like you're, 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 you're both bringing emotions out of people. That's the other thing. You know, I, like I said, I used to do uh, uh, you know, music and the, the benefit of playing live is you get that firsthand reaction. Like, okay, these guys are digging it or, or maybe we got to take this, the set in a different direction. You get the instant kind of acknowledgement yeah. of what's going on. I yeah. imagine, you know, as a, a stuntman, an actor, you know, going to the theater or the premiere or whatever, that's where you see that. Uh, I, th I think it's even harder when people do like motion cap for like video games and things like that. Cause yeah, everything yeah. stuff in their home, you know? Um, so yeah, I was going mean, to ask you what, what that is mo like. Mocap. Mocap is fun, dude. It's yeah, it is. A, it's exhausting as all hell, you know, because you're wearing a head to toe suit and you're basically wearing like, you know, a huge glove attached to your body with a bunch <laughs> yeah. of dots on it. Yeah. And you're doing every possible motion that a video game character could do. So you'll do it yeah. and they'll be like, okay, well shoot right handed. Okay, now I'll do it left handed. Now I'll do it from a kneeling position. Now I'll do it running backwards. Now I'll do it strafing sideways. Now I'll do it wow. and fall. Now I'll do it and fall on the other side. And after a while you're like, my God. <laughs> Yeah. I need some water. I'm dying. I need some yeah. water. <laughs> yeah, but that, it, that's it, nice. it's fun because you know you're you're playing around to a certain extent because you know they're they want you to give them as much data as you can. More, more the better, right? I imagine the more even, the better. Even shooting a film for whether it's TV or movie, I imagine yeah, the more the better, especially because most stuff is in editing, anyways. Is is right? Most of the yeah. you want to catch, capture the magic, but it's you know the way you edit later. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of work <laughs> yeah it's a lot of work but mo mocap it, it's it's fun it's it, it's awesome it's one of those things that you know i i play video games i love games so yeah getting to do mocap i'm like oh so this is how this is done oh, okay but i imagine like when you're involved in a project you're like okay i'm I'm zoned in like i'm you know i'm, I'm working right now right and then i was going to ask you like that feeling of you know you know I, what, maybe what other people can relate to is like hey i painted my room or something 
Mm-hmm. And when you're done, you can sit back and like, ah, I can enjoy the, the hard work I put in. So what does that feel like, man? What, when you, whatever the project is, whether it's TV, movie, mocap, whatever, when you're, you're done, you're just sitting back and just like, what, what is it like absorbing that? And you know, you put hard work into that and what, what it, I, I mean, again, it's like anything, like what you said with painting the room or like when you build something with your hands or you like you cook a good meal. Yeah. It's it's pride in the sense of like I did that and I'm happy I did that, not in a boastful way of like, oh, my God, right. look at me. But it's more so when you see people having an appreciation for what's being presented. You know, like, like the, the worst yeah. feeling on the planet is to create something and somebody go, eh, nah, <laughs> not yeah. eh. You know, like you killed yourself cooking for whatever your significant other and she tries it and she's like, eh. <laughs> and you're like, dude, that took me like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Take the apron off. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it's cool to see the appreciation from like fans or people that watch and they're like yeah. oh my god i saw you on xyz and that episode was really good and i was freaking out when you showed up and you're like oh okay cool like but how was the show oh the show's great and you know the appreciation again like the, the being able to to get people to react whether yeah. it be in a you know in a, in a positive way or, or they get angry at the main villain like I was there, <laughs> yeah you know dude if you're playing a villain and people are pissed at you, you're doing your job. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing right. your job. You're doing your job. <laughs> and you're so getting it, more, uh, that. more face. I, that, that was the other thing I, I was emailed. Then I wanted to bring up, um, you know, like when you're, when you're, whether it's a, a TV show or movie or whatever, um, you know, for you, like, do you really have a preference, whether it's uh, a stunt, a fight scene or acting like do you have a, or you just love it all. Like, or where would you want to go with that more? Don't have a preference. At, at the at the end of the at the end of the day, your title is stunt performer. Right. Like your job is to perform. Perform. And yeah. But the job is to perform. At the end of the day, your job is to perform. Whether that be fighting on camera, whether that be selling an emotion, whether that be selling scene, whether that be delivering a line, your job is to contribute to that piece of art. That is being created on camera. That's your job. Yeah. So whatever that entails for the day, that's your contribution to that project. If your contribution is to go freeze, that's your contribution. That, if just, your contribution and, and, is to stand in front of a truck and get blown up, yeah. hey, that's your contribution. <laughs> so it, it's just keeping this mindset of like, there is, you know, the, the job is the job. Yeah. yeah, your job yeah. is to contribute to art, to create art. How you go about creating that is really up to you, but it's 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 creating art and it's taking pride in the fact that you're creating art because it, it's it's film, it's subjective, it's art. It lives on for like after I die, whenever it's that may still, be. Still, yeah, it's still there. Those films are always going to be there. That's amazing. Or the shows or whatever you worked on. That's that's awesome. Yeah, and have that mentality going into it. Yeah, because it is. It's art. It's not just that, that's why another thing I started uh, I'm inviting a lot of uh, stunt performers um, on the show because, you know, they didn't have as much because it kind of goes with the territory a little bit. Most of mm-hmm. the FaceTime and the interviews and things like that are with the people who you see on the screen. You know, they are yeah, talking on the poster. Like, yeah, on the poster. But when you watch the the trailer, most mm-hmm. of that's the, the, the stunt performers. Um, mm-hmm. And but, you know, I mean, you get to come out a bit like in uh, when you're in Gotham. Oh, yeah. Right, you get the a little more more FaceTime. Uh, do you yeah. want to? Um, do you? I was going to ask. I like to ask this too, especially with stunt performers. Do you want to gear? Um, con- not only continue what you're doing, but grow and stunt coordinating. Um, maybe even more acting, writing, directing. Like, where where do you kind of see the future of? You know, some goals you want to do. Uh coordinating in its in its own probably not. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that avenue is, you know, I'll fight coordinate, I'll put together fights and stuff like that. That avenue, like, I'm slowly yeah. starting to explore, you know, on my own, just playing around here and there. Okay. Uh, as far as, like, running the entire, you know, being the captain of the ship that goes down with the Titanic, yeah, right. well, that's, yeah, let, let's, <laughs> let's leave that to people who are, who are more experienced in that department than me. But, you know, again, whether it's acting or doing the stunts like i really don't 
have like a preference because to me it, it they all go hand in hand gotcha i, I like they, that That's they, they all go hand yeah. in hand like as a as a stunt performer again your job is to perform yeah your job is to perform like you should have the same ability to throw a punch and throw a kick shoot a gun as you have to deliver a line when you're required to deliver a line yeah great great point you should be able to evoke emotion whenever you're delivering lines you shouldn't just be like a wooden person like yeah, yeah. uh hi my name is like you should be able to convey emotion because you're performing you're performing in front of the camera you're contributing to the art piece that's amazing. so I, you know i i don't separate them you know is is what we do on its own dangerous yeah there is that element of danger that it, I mean, right. they just is right. you're you're physically doing something with your body, and there's yeah. a lot of moving parts to it, and you have to be on your p's and q's, and you have to be awake, and you have to know where camera is, and where your partners are, and where the actors are, and where background is, and you know you have to know you have to be very aware of what you're doing. You have to train. Training is so important. You have to train. Huge. Yeah, yeah, it's huge. huge. I, uh, what do you like to do to to keep, uh, you know, I'm sure certain jobs you have to maybe learn something new for that or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. And I'm sure you have, you know, stories of, of piecing that as you go through, you went through your career, but uh, mm -hmm. what do you, what are the main ones you like to just keep sharp as far as training's concerned? Honestly, right now it's more about mobility and flexibility. Wow. Yeah. I, again, I, that's more. a major thing I've been focusing on, especially teaching as much as I do. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think as martial artists, as a stunt performer, as an athlete, we have this really bad habit, and I'm guilty as hell of this, that it's your foot is always on the gas, right? I gotta go to the gym, I gotta lift, oh, I gotta yeah. bar, I gotta roll, I gotta train, I gotta be on the wire, I gotta hit the trampoline, I gotta flip, I gotta. And then at the end of the week, you're like, yeah. you know, you're, you're, you're like, everything hurts. Uh, oh my God, if I sneeze, my back, this, that, the third. You forget to the same amount of punishment you put your body through. You also have to put that same amount of time into recovering, into yes. Very good stretching, point. doing yoga, balance out your nutrition, sleep. Sleep's huge. Yeah. Sleep is huge. Yeah. Make sure you go to like your chiropractor, your physical therapist, not only when something hurts, but just on a regular, like you tend to go to, right. you know, you tend to go, oh, oh, this hurts. Dude, we'll go and nothing's hurting. Just, you know, get everything. Well, it's kind of like the what they say out. about like, 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 uh, being, uh, speaking of which properly hydrated. So like by the time you're thirsty, you're already, you're already dehydrated. Too late. Yeah. That's so that's a, late. that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah. So right now it's more about like upkeep and maintenance and, you know, once things resume, um, like I, I, I tell, you know, people when I used to teach, it's like, try to work on what you're not good at. Because you we always develop this habit that you always go to what you're good at. And yeah. there's no, there's no progress, right? There's no right. progress within your, your comfort zone. All progress takes place outside of your comfort zone. So That's if it. you're a really good fighter, but you can't drive, guess what? Get behind the wheel. Right. If you're a really good driver, but you can't fight, then guess what? Go start hitting the mitts. Go start learning how to fight. Great point. If That's you're great. good at both of those, but you can't ride a wire, then guess what? Yeah, we're yeah. So, you know, it, it's all it's all about seat time. So once things resume, it, it's all about figuring out. Okay, what do I do well, and what do I do that's kind of eh? Okay, I'm gonna work on my eh. Yeah, yeah. That's a major thing I advocate when I'm teaching students for my martial arts. Uh, is that you know you're amazing in this area cool well work on the area that you're weak on or it's a, the new year's resolution every year for my school it's like just mm -hmm. pick whatever you feel you've been the weakest on and it could be anything not just martial oh. arts and work yeah. on that thing then you'll be well-rounded and and solid yeah I, I, and, and again that, that that carries on into life right like if you're one of these people that you're bad at main, uh, managing your finances then you know what start start working on that work right. on managing your finances work on so putting money do, right there's, there's so, so much, much to learn and, yeah there's so much to learn so much to do like if, if you're bad at cooking like you know you're one of these people that you burn water right then guess what 
Start doing that. Start start which, balancing out your skill set. Well, speaking of which, another thing that you're you're you are skilled at. I was uh, I thought it was cool. I wanted to bring it up. Uh, is you're oh, amazing boy. at drawing, man. <laughs> drawing, coloring, everything is is that a is that a tablet or is that that is my iPad Pro. Uh, that's amazing, man. How long have you been drawing? Like just long as long as you've been into like uh, coming in college as a kid. I think I learned how to draw before I learned how to write. Oh. <laughs> uh it, it's again, it's like family, like my father draws, my cousins know how to draw. Oh, okay. It's something that just kind of carried over. Yeah. And it's you know, whenever I have time just to decompress, sit there and just start creating something you know late at night or whenever i have nothing to do and just to decompress and put something on on the page and it's just to you know, keep the hand educated as well yeah well the choreography i mean and there's a lot i mean there's a lot of uh like uh like ancient you know ancient japan like swordsmen they were they're mm -hmm. really into calligraphy and, and things things along those lines using the same kind of motor skills so to speak and it, it, make, it makes a lot of sense i always advocated to that or even um you know, being a musician that translated amazing to jujitsu or especially like the sambo judo side of things yeah you know, timing and everything it all transfers over that the, the timing or, or in this case even the artistry uh it it, it it does i remember when when uh we used to have fight camps when i was competing you know we're sparring one day in class whatever and my instructor puts on like salsa you know, like, like some Latin music, something very, very calm, kind of soothing. And everybody's sparring, you know, very light. And they'll take it light. No one's going yeah. crazy. And then he changes and puts on heavy metal. And it was like Slipknot, something really <laughs> heavy. And people started killing each other. All of a sudden, you start hearing the shots started landing harder. <laughs> the leg kick started getting bashed in. And at the end of class, he goes, did anybody notice anything during the session? And people are like, well, you know, this, that. He's like, did anyone notice like a difference in tempo during the sparring session? Right. Like, yeah. You guys were sparring a certain way when this type of music was playing. And then I played this type of music. And all of a sudden, everybody started picking it up without me saying anything. It Why did that happen? That. It incites that, right? It that's, does. That's amazing. So it, 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 I guess the lesson of the class was, also, it was to understand to control yourself and block out a lot of those external forces like those that external yeah. energy that you know you hear something and all i'm it's like i gotta kill this person it's like no you can still maintain the right. same calm yeah. you had before regardless of what's going on or what music is playing or who's screaming at you who's booing who's or if telling you're, yeah, you live in an audience or uh yeah yeah because it will happen when you're competing right you get there and there's your people that are rooting for you and there's your opponent's people who are rooting for him and you'll get there and you're hearing kick his ass from your side. And then from their side, they're like, take his head off. And you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And it's learning to kind of tune that out and that, not fall into that moment of like, I have to take his head off. Yeah. You, you don't. You don't. Calm down. It'll, it'll come. It'll come. Chill out. It'll come. Do you plan on doing um, uh, any more fights in the future, you think? or Not, not dude. I'm, my, days in the ringer. my days in the ringer. Yeah, my days in the ring are done. Um, I, I had my fill. I did my damage. It was, it was fun. It was an experience. It, it right. again, it taught it taught me a lot about myself, about other people. I traveled. Uh, you know, I love martial arts. Um, I love competition. I love watching people compete. Yeah. Because you know, again, people have this misconception that, uh, oh, like you're you're a fighter. Like you guys are violent, or you guys love to fight. And it's like. No, the opposite, dude. Ever since I yeah. started doing martial arts, I haven't gotten into a fight since. I mean, if you train, you know, yeah, especially train, like, yeah, you're usually more cool and tempered. <clears throat> um, I mean, that's a major reason thing that you kind of naturally byproduct get out of uh, doing any martial art. Really, you just kind of, yeah, yeah, you're more mellow. Like about I, it. no, like I, you know, I, I don't like violence for the sake of violence. Yeah. Because, you know, there's two aspects of it. There's competition and there's combat. Right. Combat right. is what the military does. Yeah. That's combat. When you're overseas or wherever you're at, your life is on the line, it's kill or be killed, that's combat. What you do in the ring where there's a ref, yeah. there's a yeah. ruling system, your corner can throw in the towel and save your ass if you're not doing too well, you can tap out, that's competition. Because right. there's rules to it. 
you know, you're getting a little trophy or a medal or a belt at the end of the day, that's competition. That's not combat. Great point. So yeah. I, I, I think a lot of people can't distinguish one from the other. Or they think like just because you compete, like you're this bloodthirsty savage person. It's like, yeah, no, I, mean, I. That's a great point because isn't that like a big thing with it? Because yes, if you if you compete, you know they kind of you know even the first like you know I don't know first like ten years of the UFC it was it was deemed like modern day gladiatorial, whatever. It's definitely yeah. become more of a sport. Obviously, yeah. I do miss the style versus style blood sport style though. There's something poetic yeah. about. It. There's something yeah. About it. There was some novelty to it to have like that Mortal Kombat, yeah, you know, yeah. Bl blood sport type, you know, the kung fu guy versus the karate guy, and let's see whose martial arts is better, you know. Yeah, uh, but if there's something with that, you, you know, especially when I'm training officers, like, um, or anybody really, but mm -hmm. like officers on a daily basis would have to use it more than an average bear, you know, yeah, for no job, and. Mm -hmm. You get in there, and especially when people get to, let's say, sparring. This doesn't they have to be just jiu-jitsu, any martial art. You definitely see what, whatever experience or training they, they already have or mm -hmm. don't have. Uh, you could tell, okay, this guy right away, this guy has a background in football in high school. It's probably the last time he was doing anything combative, physical. Or this guy, yeah. uh, police officers tend to have a really good, I, I call it, keep the ball in front of you thing. They always yeah. have a good way of keeping the guy in front of you, and you can tell someone's a wrestler and this and the other thing. And um, the more trained you are, the more appropriately and calmly or correctly, I should say, you respond mm -hmm. to actual violence or something physical happening. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm less likely of pulling a gun out on you if I know I can. Oh, no, I'm we're good. Dude, it, it's like anything that requires a fine motor skill is yeah. training on top of training on top of training on top of tra training is so fundamental. Because training will teach you not to panic, not yeah. to freak out, not to take not to take things personally. Because I think right, the biggest mistake cool. a lot of people do when they go to a gym, yeah, something happens in sparring or you're rolling with someone and someone hits you a little too hard for whatever reason. Because you know your fifty percent is in my fifty percent. Right. Good point. Yep. And and automatically, oh, he hit me hard. I'm like, dude, did you talk to him? No, but he hit me hard. I'm like, okay. So how does he know that he hit you hard unless you go up to him and, and, him and be like, hey, dude, can we go a little lighter? Yeah. You know what that is? And I used to tell some of the guys, like, that's your ego talking. Right. Yeah, that's a, big, that's a big subject for sure. That's your ego. That's the first thing you leave outside of a martial arts school is your ego because that's the first thing that's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. Because your ego is going to tell you, oh, I'm getting beat up. I should be beating this guy up. I should be at this rank level. Oh, this person got promoted and I didn't get promoted. Oh, he got a strike, but I didn't get a strike. Right. It's your ego talking. You leave that outside. Don't bring your yeah. ego into the school. Great. You're there yeah. to leave acquire the information. Yeah, you're a student. You know, you're you're always. In, in many ways, yeah, you're always like forever a student. Like uh, yeah. I think I'm not sure uh, George St. Pierre got it, but he had a great quote of, you know, I, I always seek perfection, knowing I'll never attain it. Yeah, it's truth because you, you never stop learning, man. You you you, you keep uh, adding to it or whatever it is. It, it can be you know, like your stunt work. You're, you're, there's another thing that you're gonna have to learn one day for a, a job, or you're always gonna have more. Yeah, dude. Like one of one of the things uh, a friend of mine told me is like, you know, the day you feel like you have nothing left to learn is the day you shouldn't be at the school. Like, yeah. if you really think like, oh, you're the master at something, why are you here? Why are you paying for tuition? Why are you taking class if you're you know, you know it all. Why are you here? I yeah. I love being at that white belt level of mm -hmm. like I don't yeah. I don't know how to do this. Teach me how to do this. Oh, show me how to do this right handed. Show me how to do this left handed. Show me how to do this from a kneeling position or on my back or because it, you have something to play with. Exactly. Yeah. Not having something to play with is when you start getting bored because you're like, oh, okay, the same thing all over again. It's like no, yeah. like you you want to <laughs> have that. Oh, something new, a new toy, a new technique, a new this, a new that. Great point. That, that's a huge point. I mean, yeah, otherwise, if you feel like you know it or you've learned all you could from it, like you're not going to put the energy into it that you would need to go to whatever next. And it's false, too. Like it, you, there is a lot more you can learn there. And if you truly can't learn there, mm -hmm. you know, go elsewhere or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. And, and then it's also understanding, like, I, I always say that 
rules are meant to be broken, right? You have, when you do martial arts, you have principles. Like there's a set guidelines you have to abide by, but nothing is outside of the realm of like, oh, you can't do that that way. Well, why not? Like I'm six feet, 180 pounds. I can't expect someone who's five foot two, 130 to do the same thing I'm doing the same way I'm doing it. Right. Yeah. What works for me might not work for them. Great what point. works yep. for them might not work for me because different body types, right? So I can't go up to that person and be like, well, that's not how you do that because I, I do it this way. Again, that's your ego talking. Yeah. You can always learn more on it. And th like when this is, uh, you know, things, I, I, they will never go back to normal, but like a new normal, mm -hmm. like things start mm -hmm. leveling out and all that and production start getting back up and underway. Uh, like, do you have, like were you, you were right in the middle of, of things or preparing for projects. Like you got things ready yeah. to go. Uh, yeah. We were in the middle of shooting a couple of things when this hit, unfortunately, and things, you know, we had to press the pause button and make sure everybody was safe and everybody right. respectfully went back to their families and took care of their loved ones and the yeah. elderly and their children. And, and then things progressively kept getting <laughs> crazier and crazier. <laughs> I keep yeah. telling my friends, like, I'm kind of half expecting Godzilla to pop out of the ocean at some point. I'll be like, all right, yeah, okay, I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is it is nuts. I, or even I, I've been interviewing some people overseas, and, like, um, you know, there's one guy in Israel, and another guy was in, like, in Spain. And they're like, yeah, Europe's, like, talking about getting ready for phase, or not phase, um, second wave, which a lot of places in the States are confronting that right now. And, um, yeah. We I don't know. We flu season yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's it's, gonna be another one. It's crazy. It's crazy, and um, yeah, no, nobody's real, real, really uh, prepared for whatever. But we'll see. But definitely looking forward uh, to see more of your work, man. I mean, you, you've been. Uh, I, I'll even bring this up. I, I didn't get to touch base on this. I mean, you've been yeah. in a, a bunch of amazing things. I mean, Narcos is uh, oh, an amazing God. series in, in Narcos. I mean, yeah, the list goes on. Blacklist. This this one, everybody should see this movie. I just actually recently watched it. And Adam uh, Sandler's at his like I didn't know he had like acting chops like that. It was amazing. You should see that movie. Do not take your kids to see that movie. No, no. <laughs> Do not take <laughs> that's not a family that, movie. Yeah, that movie is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, he was amazing to work with. Super down and it it's you know, again, like he's, you know, talking to us off camera or whatever. And he's like, you know, I'm X amount of years old. And you're like, and he goes, yeah, Happy Gilmore was a long time ago. And you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Like you forget that, you know, yeah. he's been in the game for so long. So long. Yeah. Yeah. But a super, super nice guy. Super nice guy. It, it's yeah. And it was all it was amazing. And, you know, I, I don't know, like, you know, I, it looks like at least the Marvel, um, TV shows that might have been the same kind of people might have. That's how you maybe got connected with the other ones. All these other ones. I mean, like I said, it's, it's just testament to, to your work ethic and, and what you bring to the table. I, I mean, I'll just show two more for uh, people watching uh, Blacklist, another amazing show, uh, Blind well, Spot. Blind Spot. Yeah, you know, I think it ends this week. Yeah. 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 It, it's wild, man. Like you got some, you know, through you know all these things that you've you've gone through, you you gave them some really good points. And, and what I like about the points you give too is it, you know there's really good takeaways for people. Yeah, a lot, I mean, a lot of people don't know what to do right now, and I, I think uh, that helps a lot of people out. I mean, you know, I mean as cliche as it sounds, like right, you kind of have to see the glass half full. Yeah, because at the end of the day, yeah, you're stuck at home, and a lot of people aren't working, which is sad. Yeah. Right, because people need to pay their mortgages and they need to pay their bills, and kids need to go to school and get an education, and life has to continue. But you're also getting a chance to spend more time one on one with people that you sometimes used to see for an hour a day. True, yeah, yeah. I got friends of mine that you know work 10 hours a day, and then they come home and it's okay, do homework with the kids and yeah. spend like two hours with the spouse, and then put the kids to bed and get up the next day and do it all over again. And now they're like, and I'm spending all this time with my kids and we're doing all these things and I'm spending all this time with my wife or my husband and our relationship has gotten stronger. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, you, you're getting to spend that quality time that you didn't have before. 
Yeah, interesting. It, it, that, it I is. thought that was uh, uh, the human humanity side of that. I thought it was amazing, you know, feeling that, you know, witnessing that and experiencing that with my, my own wife and kids. And, um, and then I also thought it was interesting. I think it was within the first two or three months of this happening. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw like certain like, like animals, like, like deer are running through like downtown cities and stuff now. Like they're kind of like, Oh, it's you cool wanna... to come out now. <laughs> yeah. The, the, it... the, the, the pests that are humans aren't around anymore. Yeah, and it is it's so wild, man. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of I mean you know, you can always turn lemons into lemonade. And uh, you know, like like for me, at least um I've been able to do some online stuff with people for, for the the school, and we usually do big seminars every year. So like we have mm -hmm. like whether it's Hoist Gracie or uh oh. you know, judo we had Jimmy Pedro, judo champion out. We usually have like big seminars and uh we had to cancel all those like, you know, everybody else had to. And that sort of kind of morphed into this show. And I just started really uh, talking with people. And, uh, you know, it's it's amazing. You know, I, I think more people need to know about what stunt performers do because they do oh, def bring definitely. such such a, a great amount to the table. Yeah. Uh, I listen, I, I know, I know this, this has been said to death, but the fact that there's no Oscars, category i've been saying at, it, man. At, yeah and I, listen and at the end of the day you know it's 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 a it's a trophy right it's someone telling you hey here you go you did a good job right but it is also people recognizing that hey you guys are a part of this entire piece you guys are a functioning part of the machine this could not have been completed if it wasn't for you guys Right. Especially with all these films that you have now, like in the MCU, the oh, Mission Impossible yeah. films, the Batman Huge. movies, you know, it, it it's it's a part of the business that, granted, for years, it's always been the sense of like kind of anonymity when it comes to stunts because we're like the smoke and mirrors of it all. Like you right. don't want to give away all your tricks, right? But you also want people to know that, hey, we're... Batman doesn't glide <laughs> through the air. Yeah. Spider Man doesn't sling around unless stunts are involved. Yeah, I mean, even even with computers because they're in mocap. So yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, even there, how do we make this guy look like he's he's actually human here? Oh, motion motion capture suit, cool. Yeah, we need a stunt stunt person in there. You know, yeah. it's so yeah. There's so much to go with that. It's such a a, a rich part of the storytelling and. I think you know, like just like yeah, we're kind of we're talking a little bit about with music or mm -hmm. you know, with the sparring thing. Uh, same thing with movies or any form of art. It, it is uh, inciting some sort of whether it's a mood, feeling, attitude, or whatever, and and that's that's important. So I, I just I just wanted to personally thank you for doing what you do because oh, you do amazing dude. work, man. It's awesome. Thank, thank thank you, dude. You're out there teaching the masses, you know, martial arts and jujitsu, and again you're paying it forward right you just told me you had all these seminars lined up and yeah i don't do that you know, for fun man that's that well i mean it, it's fun meeting people but uh yeah that's that's to get people the experience it, it, it's hard to run a martial arts school man i know a lot of people uh, that do and i'm like i don't know how you deal with the chaos with the because you're babysitting a uh, yeah, lot of people yeah, to to a point. Yeah, you're trying to you're kind of guiding them through. Yeah, because yeah, yeah you, you've trained a lot of people. Yeah, it, it's um, it, it is uh, its own thing. It's rewarding in many ways, and yeah, but it's like anything else. You know, you're 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 always learning. I I'm just, you know, even if I was a, you know, a red belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or mm -hmm. a super high end competitor from Judo or Sambo or whatever whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm still a student. You know, like at yeah, the end of the day, always, I'm, even then, I'm, you're still learning. You're still always learning a play. student. Uh, always. But trust me, you 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 have my respect because I, I think that the one thing that being able to, to to teach has given back to me is that seeing change in people. Right? Yeah. You see somebody walk into a gym and you see them go through those first steps just like you did of like not knowing what the hell they're doing. Everything's yeah. kind of crooked and kind of wonky. Their balance is off. They're kind of... Oh, I don't want to get, you know, you know, beat up and like, no, 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 no. And then you kind of hold their hand and walk them through it. And then a couple of years later, you see them, you know, performing at, at, at a level that you're like, oh, my God. Remember that yeah. first time when you walked in and you couldn't do anything? And they're like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and just being able to see that. To, to yeah, it's amazing. Un 
just being able to unlock potential and a person that probably they didn't even know was there to begin with. The training, for sure. And that, and that was a major staple of, of our conversation today is it, it, whatever you do, it, it's training. You got to train. train. That's you got, no you shortcut. Got, you got to train, dude. That's a one big thing. Training will give you all the tools you need to get through any type of adversity. Because, you know, you're going to fail in training. And you're going to realize that, hey, it's okay to fail. Like, this, you're not the first person to fail. You're not the last person to fail. Yeah. You know, it, it's like when, when uh, you know, you're, you're a teenager and you're out of the dance and you're trying to ask a girl out. Of, oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, you're the per first person to hear no? Good point. Yeah. yeah. You're not the first person to hear no. You're not the last person to hear no. Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with failing. There's nothing wrong in life with failing. It's part, I mean, it's part of it. It's a major. It's it's, it's part of it. Part. The, the the issue is, what do you do with it? Yeah, that's if, if where you, the... if if you fail and you don't adjust, and you stay in that mindset of I failed, and that's on you. Yeah. Now, Great if you point. take that failure and make something out of it, and make the necessary corrections and the necessary adjustments, and you progress. One thing that my instructor told me. When I was again, when I when I started kickboxing, I was horrible at it. I mean, okay. I still think I'm bad at it, but you know, everything. Oh, you're kicking like a karate guy, and this is wrong, and your hands are too low, and blah, blah blah. And I would come home frustrated. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, I suck. It's been three months. I'm not getting any better. I would spar, and I would, you know, people would mop the floor with me, and I'm like, what is like? Why am I doing this? And one day he pulled me to the side. He's like, listen, I need you to get one percent better. And I kind of looked at him, kind of like, well, like one, like one percent, like not thirty, not one percent. It's like, listen, if you get one percent better every day, in a hundred days, you're gonna be a hundred percent better. That's wow, that's amazing, and it's super confrontable and super doable, right? It's super I mean, achievable, right? It's about setting achievable goals. Just take every single day and get one percent better, and in a hundred days, three months from now. 90 days, roughly, you'll yeah. be 100% better than where you started. Great point. How, how did you actually, uh, uh, I guess, get involved in getting, you know, TV and film and things like that? How did you actually segue with that? Uh, I was uh, assisting one of my instructors to teach a class, I believe it was on a weekend. And there was a, a friend of a friend who was at the gym at the time. And I think he saw me sparring one of the students. And he came up to me and he's like, hey, you know, like you move fairly well. You know, I can tell you're a martial artist. Have you ever done any film work? Excuse me. And um, I was like, well, you know, not like I've done like music videos and stuff here and there, but nothing oh, like cool. okay. I didn't think, you know, nothing to the point where I'm like, this is my career. Right. right. So he says, hey, listen, you know, I'm working on a, on a show. You know, here's an email. They're looking for people your size and your bill. They think, you, you know, wow. you should send it in. And, you know, I gave it like a week. I kind of forgot about it. And then I was like, yeah, I found the email. I was like, All right, send the email in. I hear back like two hours later. And they're like, hey, um, you know, can you send us a photo? Send a photo. Can you send us like your measurements? Uh, would you be willing to come by the, uh, you know, this place for an audition? I was like, uh, okay, this is happening. <laughs> you know, went to the audition. You know, they tested me out. I, Passed that part, went and did you know an episode or did another episode, and then they were like, "Hey, we need you to get your SAG card. Or we can't keep hiring you." <laughs> it's like, you get oh, I, yeah. So it's like, oh, I need to spend money to make money. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I see how it is here. I, yeah, like anything so, else, you know, though. Yeah. Yeah, like anything, you have to make an investment, right? That's that's very interesting. I we we had uh, I interviewed uh, Kung Lee, and he's he's uh, absolutely phenomenal. Mm. Uh, been a big fan of his for a long time, and and yeah, of course, Sanchu champion, and, and yeah, and, and he was on into the Badlands. Yeah, and if you start getting that, I, I even asked him. It's kind of like that. He's, just, he's like, you know, uh, I think he went to help a buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's a fight back. I was like, uh, my buddy was doing his thing, and I helped him out, and then the next thing you know, I want to be in it. Um, but I, I think it's interesting. Like, it's not like uh, I mean, you always I probably imagined mm. doing things like this or wanted to. And then, um, yeah, I guess there's no, what I'm trying to get to is like, there's no, like, this is the one path you got to go to Juilliard. All right. And yeah. you have to, 
<laughs> do this next thing um, or you have to go to this specific stunt school. You can, you, you can, those are avenues. But I love hearing yeah. that, um, you know, you know, everybody's story on that. that that's awesome. You just yeah. Kinda, I mean, there are many, like, you know, like I know people that were dancers before they got into stunts. I know people that were hockey players and then they got into stunts. I know people that were scuba divers and then they got into stunts. I know people that were in the military and then they got into stunts. Like when you start talking to the guys and you start finding out like, you know, what did you do before this? And you start hearing all the stories and you're like, how the hell did you wind up here? Yeah. yeah. And then you start thinking back on your own path and you're like, oh yeah, how the hell did I wind up here? (laughs) And you start to see that there's no like universal path. It's basically life gives you certain options and then it's up to you to make something of that or not make something of that and Great live with yep. your choices that's that's a, a phenomenal point yeah I, I think uh that's a nice takeaway too is uh you know like there there are there's more than one path to you know if you have a goal and sometimes like you said you you don't know the goal is your goal yet too you know it, no. you know it's very interesting and or what the oppor- opportunities that presents themselves but there's more than one way to get to that route i thought that was uh, another interesting part of your story with this you know because i had people on too that were like you know to me i would think you know okay stunt man especially did you know or or, you know or stunt woman they maybe have a big fight background because they do a lot of fight scenes and Mm -hmm. and a lot of people i interviewed whether they did some stuff or a lot of stuff um a lot of them at stunt wise performer wise had a gymnastic background and it made a lot of sense when i heard it but i was like I never would have thought of that, but they can really move, control their body, and and, and all that. So yeah. it made a lot of sense. Yeah. So there's so many avenues. Or yeah, like you said, like this, this guy's got a scuba diver background. Cool. But he's probably gonna. Hey, there's a shark movie coming up. Right? Oh, we got this guy, and then that can easily t- anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen to be in the business. Uh, like one, know how to take directions. Key. You have to be able to know how to take directions. Be accountable in the sense of do your homework. Like, don't expect yeah. someone to come and hold your hand all the way through and be like, hey, this is like, granted, if it happens, great, God bless. Right. But also do your homework. Like, do your research. Like, train on, on your own. Like, learn how to do things. Ask. If you don't know how to do something, dude, ask. There's no shame in asking. Great point, yeah. But, you, you know, you also have to do your part because it is – it's an individual journey. It is your career. It's right. your job. It's your ass that's on the line if you mess up. Literally, <laughs> yeah, literally. So, so yeah. you know, you have to put in. You have to put in the work. You have to put in the work. You have to do your research. You have to do your homework. You have to, you know, train and understand the lingo and understand camera and understand angles and understand where you're supposed to be and. Uh, you know, look at fight scenes if that's what you want to do. You want to be a yeah. fight guy? Start looking at fight scenes. See how Jackie does things. See how Scott Atkins does things. Yeah, yeah. See how you know the different trends. Like when you when we had Shaky Cam with all the Bourne films. Oh, yeah, great point. Yeah. You know, start looking at old film footage. Look at like Akira Kurosawa, Seven Samurai, and oh, see how he composed cool. all his scenes. Great pull, man. You know, yeah. watch Yojimbo, like start looking at Amazing. the old and then watch the new. So you have that contrast and that understanding of a film. I think it's like anything else. I mean, I've heard a couple of other uh, stuff performers have brought that up. So like you want to get good at like fight scenes, watch a lot of fight scenes. And yeah. it was the same thing when I was learning to write music. I'm like, man, how, you know, how do you write a song? Okay, you can learn how to intro, da, da, da. Dude, just learn a lot of songs. Yeah, but I mean, what what do you what do you have to do to, to you know you have to pick up your instrument at a certain point yeah. and start messing around with it. Yeah, it's you the know, same. And start, so it's universal, yeah. but yeah, it, it makes so much sense. Whatever you want to be good at, do it, do it all the time. Or or even I think you mentioned at the beginning interview was uh, you know about learning a another language. You know, because everybody's got free time, right? And, yeah. Uh, but the I biggest mean, thing well. to say about or you you actually literally experienced uh, Rosetta Stone in person. Uh, having to move to uh, Puerto Rico, uh, learning Spanish because you're like, I don't know Spanish. And they do say a lot of with language, um, the best way to learn a language or, to, or best or quickest way is to be immersed in that world. So you kind of. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, what, what helped me out the most was that when I was a kid, my mother didn't speak English very well. Like her English was very, you know, like oh, okay. one or two words. 
so she spoke Spanish. My father's Spanish wasn't as good as her. So when I was home, I had to talk to my mom in Spanish and I had wow. to talk to my dad in English. Wow, really? So, you know, I, I, I kept that, you know, my mother's side of the family, everybody speaks Spanish, barely anyone speaks English. Talk to all of them in Spanish. My father's side of the family, most everybody dominates English. I had to speak to them in English. So you, you, you keep that as you're growing up and, you know, right. still carry it till the day, thank God. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. Um, I'm going to uh, wrap up the show here, man. Thank you so much for your time. Let me ask you before we end off, though. Sure. Uh, put the links up here. Uh, he's got YouTube channel, guys. Uh, Vic Plajas, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Look him up on IMDb. You'll be Jesus. glad you do. You, chances are you, you've seen a lot of his work and are a big fan of it. Uh, is there anything else you like to direct them to that I didn't have up there? I, I mean, you have stuff up there that I even forgot existed, so I think you nailed it <laughs> like, down. Oh. Man. I was like, oh, <laughs> wait. Oh, okay. I'm still yeah. got that up there. Okay. <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, man, it's been great meeting and talk with you. I want to end things off for everybody here, and uh, I'll have you hang out just one extra minute afterwards. Sure. Cool. Awesome. Uh, thanks, for everybody, for watching and listening, and uh, until the next one. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed the show. For more great interviews and content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Legends and Master Show. Also, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Be sure to go to our website, www.legendsandmastershow.com, and join our email list for all coming shows, events, and articles. See you on the next one.